Okay, so the last wow. thing I'm going to show in this workspace is um, going from non-spatial data to spatial data. So I have another uh, bookmark here where we have some non-spatial information. So in my Oracle database, I happen to have a, an address points table here. And if we take a look at the columns, you'll see there's no geometry in here. It's all just um, bar charts and numbers and stuff like that. Yep. But what we do have in here is a couple of columns that are coordinate values. So right. we've got some X and some Y data. Yep. This is very common that people think their point data is geometry when really all it's got is yep. a single column or a double column, X and Y or lat and long. And then they want to get it into a spatial database or view it with spatial tools. And you can't do that while it's looking like this. Mm -hmm. um, people have these kind of um, options in spreadsheets, you know, yeah. Excel is a very common format, even just uh, text files or your enterprise database. So what we want to do with this particular table is uh, we've been tasked to take it into SQL Server Spatial. So we've added yet another uh, writer into our workspace. I'm just going to enable these. We've got an Oracle reader. So we're reading from Oracle, and this time we're writing to uh, SQL Spatial. Wow. Again, let's uh, link those passwords up so that we've got good stuff happening with passwords. And you'll notice that when we do this kind of linking, they've given us a table in a SQL Server spatial database that doesn't look as much like our source as we thought it was going to. So there's mm -hmm. lots of attributes there that aren't going to be showing up in our table. And the first thing you notice, we've got a few red ports there. So this table would have been brought in by using that import, import from, the, yeah. from the database. Yeah. So let's add an attribute copier in here to get these um, attributes joined up. And we can take over things like our primary index. We're going to pull it out of that Oracle table and call it our address ID in our SQL table. And again, this is very common mapping schema from a source to a destination. Right, right. Particularly now, from one format to now another. Now, if I wanted to map, say, thousands, hundreds of these, is there a transformer that I could drop down that could rename a whole bunch of attributes? Maybe I could use an Excel spreadsheet to, to do this mapping? Yeah, there is, actually. We have a transformer out there called the Schema Mapper, which when you're doing a big translation like this, you would use for this sort of thing. And okay. it will then you can read your mapping from some sort of external format, um, CSV or even a database, that kind of stuff. So once we've got our attribute names all OK, we've then got to make sure we turn this stuff into spatial data. And we have a trans transforming tool for doing that, mm -hmm. something that we can use to port, turn our data into 2D points. Very easy 2D point, if I can spell it, 2D point replacer transformer. Mm -hmm. Brings our data down into here. And again, we just need to give it the names of those attributes that are holding those values for us. Yeah. So here we've got our x coordinate. And here we've got our Y coordinate. Mm -hmm. Now, what if I just had addresses? Is there any geocoding? Yeah, there is actually. You okay. could have done, we perhaps off our street name, we could have concatenated our street name together so that we had a valid street name and then we have a geocoding transformer. So we could have used, yeah, so we could have used like the Yahoo geocoding service yes. or DMTI or whatever. Yep, yeah, yep. this yeah, one in yeah. here called the Proxix yeah, geocoding. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Variety of those sort of different things. Yeah. And then, of course, the, the, good old DBAs that are managing the SQL spatial uh, database, they wanted this uh, spatial database to be in geography format because oh, SQL, okay. of course, can do geometry and geography, geography, right? So we set the writer up to write to the geography format. So geography, to be clear, is like a round world format. It's yeah, not a flat plane that's format. Right. Yeah. And so the coordinate system for that will be this lat long right. 84, oh, right? Yeah. And for, when we looked at our data, uh, we just know that those well, we didn't actually look at it, but we should have looked at it. And we can see that those x, y columns aren't anything like lat long values, right? Yeah. So what we need to do before we can load that data is reproject these so that they're in the right coordinate system. And you happen to know what the coordinate system is. I do. Whoever looks after this data was good enough to tell me that the, um, the what the coordinate system value is. So I have a coordinate system set of transformer I can throw in here to set the coordinate system of those features as they come through into a Texas state plane 83-CF coordinate system. Then when it writes it out, it will reproject it from that coordinate system into your lat long, 
and uh, put the data into our database. So FME does that automatically because the table is LL84, so it exactly. knows just to do that. Yeah, and if you didn't uh, transform it, of course, you would fail on when you went to add the data. Right. So we can uh, we can see that. So if we take a look in our SQL Server database, I'm not going to run this workspace, but we'll see that we've got our address points in there. And if we take a look at them, we can look at the top 1,000 rows. Although I personally like to show you the top 5,000 because it's a little bit more interesting. We'll make this a little bit bigger. And SQL Server 2008 has this great spatial result so that you can check that your data actually is where you said it was going to be. Oh. And so here you can see that it did write it in with the geography spatial column. Yeah. And if you uh, zoom in a bit, if I can find the zoom tool, we could see that they, it's very hard to see on the screen, but you'll see the lat longs. Yeah. And yeah. you can bring it in. Oh, look so. at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. OK. So that's our first workspace. And that does a whole lot of stuff for us. And um, oh, one last thing. Of course, we got the data all in there. And then the DBA said, well, you weren't supposed to bring in the inactive address. So how come you didn't pick that up? So what we Yeah, well, <laughs> on our Oracle, what we've got on our Oracle reader is the ability to throw in a where clause, where right. we can say, I only want particular parts of this information. And so I could have said, I only want where the status of this address is equal to is not equal to, we don't want just the inactive ones. And then that would have narrowed down my search on the reader. And the beauty of that is that it puts the work back into the database so that yeah. it's uh, much yeah. faster for everybody that's involved. So, yeah. so that, that, that's a much more efficient approach than reading them all and then having a test filter in FME to do it. Yep. It does let the database do its thing. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And so again, in SQL Server, we can do things like um, put our primary keys in here. Yeah. We can index fields if we want. We've got a variety of different options here. Yeah. Which also brings up the fact that this zoning um, attribute was actually linked to another table. There mm -hmm. were only certain values for zoning and uh, that we wanted to make sure that, that it didn't break any foreign key constraints. But because we were doing a bl bulk load, we wanted to turn that off. We weren't, mm -hmm. you know, we, the zoning table was a bit out of date and we didn't want it to fail some of our good data. Yeah. So one of the other alternatives that's available on many of our readers and writers is the ability to run a SQL statement before you execute the translation. And so what I was able to do uh, here was turn off that constraint checking. Yeah. So we turn it off, we load the data, and then after we've run the translation, we can turn it back on again. So we have the ability here to run a second one that's turning my constraint back on. Yeah. And again, that capability, so much of this is available on all of them. So you can do yeah. this on Oracle, you can do this on PostGIS, anything that you want. Yeah. Good. Cool. Wow, so that's reading and writing. Yes, pretty much done and, to and, death, huh? Yeah, and pretty much, you know, one of the things is that I didn't have to know much about any particular database. They all look pretty much they the same. They look much the same. But yeah. if you are familiar with your databases, then, you know, for Oracle here, we handle workspace, manage yeah. workspace yeah. management, so yeah. we do that. Yeah. Um, We've got a writer mode on here. We could have done updates or inserts or whatever. Right. But what I'll send you when you get your um, output is a uh, the completed workspace, and you can take a look at these different transformers if you didn't happen to catch it all. Great.